This is where we have the 30,000 amp case, 30 kA. And we had calculated the arcing current of 16.7 kA. And we calculated an incident energy. We calculated the normalized incident energy. And then the incident energy based on our actual 18-inch working distance and, and our actual device clearing time. So the final step, what we want to do is determine what the flash protection boundary would be for this case. We still have this time current curve for the 225 amp device. We still have an interruption that's going to be within a cycle, 0 0.0167 seconds. And this is the worksheet that we're going to use. The incident energy, the normalized incident energy from the previous problem that we solved is 4.8206 joules per square centimeter. That's the incident energy based on 0.2 seconds and based on 24 inches, 2 feet. The X that we looked up previously is still 1.641. We want to determine what the flash protection boundary is based on reaching 5 joules per square centimeter. And with all this information, take a few moments, look at this problem, run through the numbers, and see what you come up with as far as the calculated flash protection boundary. And then once you've had time to go over this, I'll come back and we'll go over this together. I'll, I'll work this for you. And then we'll move on from there. You start out with 610 millimeters. That's based on the 24-inch normalized distance. Raise it to the x value of 1.641 and divide this by 5 joules per square centimeter, which is what we're looking for, the, the second degree burn threshold. We want to know where that boundary would lie. 37,215 divided by 5 joules, we have 7,400. 43. And you could have just copied that number down from the previous problem because it's the same number. So we take the one cycle, 0 0.0167 seconds, and divide that by 0.2 seconds, our normalized value, and that gives us the 0 0.0835. And then step three, we take the incident energy, the normalized incident energy from the previous problem, 4.8206, multiply that times the calculation factor one and a half, times 4.184. Step 3 is 30.254. Now we multiply all three steps. Step 1 times 2 times 3, so we have 7,443 times 0 0.0835 times 30.254, and we get a final answer here of 18,803. The 18,803, we take that number and raise it to the 1 over x. We raise it to 1 divided by 1.641, or we take 18,803 and raise it to the 0 0.609 power. And that gives us 402 millimeters. If you take 402 millimeters and you divide by 25.4, that's 15.8, or it's rounded up 16 inches for your flash protection boundary, which makes sense because if we calculated something slightly less, than the second degree burn threshold, then to actually reach that second degree burn threshold, we have to get a little bit closer. 16 inches makes sense when you're, when you're sanity checking and trying to think through your numbers. So what most people would do is they would publish in their reports, on their labels, a 16 inch flash protection boundary. But it's really not such a bad idea to establish just a more standard, a more uniform flash protection boundary. Let's kind of put this in perspective. If you have an arc flash, if you have a significant arc flash, it's a lot like a bomb. There's an explosion, there's a lot of fire, there's a lot of debris, a lot of shrapnel, and depending on how bad it is, there's a good chance if you're not properly protected, you're going to get killed. So let's put this in perspective. You, you wear the correct PPE, and you're performing the work. Here is what I've seen on a couple of occasions, and I have heard this from many people, that they've seen it on more than one occasion. Somebody's there doing the work. They have all the correct PPE on. They've, they've done their homework. They, they're getting it all right. And here comes an onlooker walking by, and you get that old famous, what are you doing? Oh, neat. And they're up there, and they're just kind of looking at everything because the, the mentality, the thought process is this person's the one doing the work. They're the ones that need the PPE. I'm not doing the work. I don't need the PPE. Well, the problem is you're in the battle zone. If you're within that flash protection boundary, A, you're not supposed to be there, and B, you violated the approach limits, and you're really not supposed to be there. But to most people, they don't know, and, and it can happen. Here's one way to handle this. If somebody walks up to you, and they're not being real cooperative about getting out of the way, think of it like this. 
if that person saw someone from a bomb disposal unit, and you have this big tank, and there's a bomb down there, and they have all this lead protection on, and they're trying to defuse a bomb, and, and they're down in there trying to, trying to cut this and, and, and cut the wires and everything, would they walk up, put their arm up on the guy's shoulder, and kind of look over there and just say, hey, I think, wow, I, I think I'd cut the red one if I were you. <laughs> They'd be as far out of there as you could possibly get. And that's kind of what happens with arc flash. You know, e even though most people don't think of it as a bomb, electric power is serious stuff. And if you have a high enough short circuit current, a high enough voltage, and, and a pretty significant, you know, pretty decent clearing time, and it doesn't take a whole lot on either one of those counts, you, you, get, the, you get the right mix, and if something goes wrong, it's going to act just like a bomb. There's going to be explosive forces, there's going to be deafening sound pressure, there's going to be blinding light, and whoever is in the path that doesn't have the correct protection is either going to be very seriously injured or killed, just like a bomb. So it's really important that you make sure that not just the person doing the work has the correct PPE and they have to be qualified to know what they're doing, but if anybody gets even close, you really need to push them back. If they don't belong there, just get them out of the way. <laughs>